Hey, good morning. It is Friday, the 12th of April of 2024. I am greeting you from Ketchikan. Happy Friday. Hope you have a great weekend planned. I'm continuing on part two of on Psalm 91. The Lord has just driven this into my heart that people need to embrace Psalm 91 as their hedge of protection. And what he said today is something he put me in remembrance of. Um, I don't know if you know who Corey Ten Boon is, but Corey Ten Boon was a Dutch woman and with her family in Holland during World War II. And they had, uh, there's a very famous book that she wrote called The Hiding Place. And they sequestered a number of Jews and kept them protected from the Nazis for years until they were finally discovered. And ultimately she served time with her sister in one of the concentration camps. Her sister died and Corey was ultimately released and has written many books about that whole experience. But what she said about prayer, which I believe is so important about Psalm 91, is she said, make prayer the key to your morning and the lock at night. So begin your day and end your day. Well, as the Lord has just been compelling me to embrace Psalm 91 and share that message with you, he said, I want you to make Psalm 91 the key to your morning and the lock at night. So not just speak it over your household once a day, but do it twice a day, in the morning, in the evening. This is a universal psalm of protection. It's also known as the soldier psalm. And it is so powerful that even in, there is documentary, uh, documentation even today of different um, infantries that ha have Psalm 91, they speak it over themselves and they have remarkable results in battle. One particular infantry in World War I was called the 91st Brigade. And their leader happened to be a very strong Christian. And he gave every one of his troops a small card with Psalm 91 printed on it. And they recited it um, daily. And he, they ultimately were engaged in three of the bloodiest battles of World War III. Now, there were many other troops, uh, infantries involved in these battles, but the 91st Brigade was reported not to have one single casualty related to combat in World War I, while other infantries, American troops, had severe 90% casualties in this bloody war. So... I just share that with you. I've put some links in my notes that you can find at lesliebecker.org under blogs. All the recordings are there. All the notes are there. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more about this, go there. But let's talk today about verses four, five, and six. And Lord pulled out a few little things here. So number verse four of 91 says, he shall cover you with his feathers. He's covering us with his feathers and under his wings, shall you trust his truth shall be thy shield how does shield it protects you and buckler well buckler is not a word we use very much today in our english language but when you look it up as a noun it means a shield or defensive armor as a verb it means to support and to defend but if you look up the word buckler and in the Old Testament, in the concordance, in the Hebrew, it means something surrounding a person. So think of that as the Spirit of God surrounding you for protection. He has a hedge of protection around you. That is your, he is your buckler. So I think that's pretty exciting because I like to know that I've got something protecting me when I go out and come in. Verse 5 says, Thou shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day. And it references Job chapter 5, verses 19 through 23. Well, I'm only going to read Job 5, 19. And it says, He shall deliver thee in six troubles, yet in seven there shall no evil touch thee. So it's just a continual. God constantly reconfirms his word throughout the Bible. So that's a really exciting passage that I wasn't totally familiar with. I knew that there was something about protection in Job, but I didn't know this specific passage. So I share that with you. Six troubles, we are protected. He's going to deliver us and no evil will touch us in seven. So that's great to know. In verse six, it says, 
nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. Now, boy, don't we know a lot about pestilence. We've experienced that over the last four years, all of this, these waves of epidemics and all these different things that we're hearing a lot of things about. Nor for the destruction that lays waste at noonday. Well, let 